Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Empires and Puzzles video, and it did not take long, but we've already got two of the brand new... I don't even know what they're called, Untold Tales? It's a terrible name. Defenders of Atlantis, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> this art is... Whew. Not good. Before we get to this video, if you haven't checked out Gemstone Legends yet, come check it out. There are no joke thousands of players from Empires and Puzzles that have come over already, and for good reason. Simply put, it's a really fun game with some big advantages over Empires and Puzzles. We both know that the players that join these games earliest are some of the most dominant players. And this game is starting to really take off, so the longer you wait, the more you miss out on. Not only can you support the channel by using the download link in the description of this video, or by scanning the QR code on your screen, but doing so will also give you a free $50 starter bonus with an epic hero, gems, and gold coins, all for free, just by using the link or QR code provided. And then when you start, you'll gain access to beginner events exclusively for players who use the link or QR code provided that will give you another strong epic hero, a set of five-star legendary equipment, and a platinum scroll for another guaranteed epic or legendary hero. Lastly, I have created a bunch of videos and a Gemstone Legends playlist on my YouTube channel to make learning this game as easy and fun as possible. So hit that download link in the description and get started with one of the most fun and deep match three RPGs. There's a great community in Gemstone Legends. It has some huge advantages over empires and puzzles. And overall, I think you guys are really gonna like it. So, quite a defense team with the double limit broken. Obicon, quite good. Ferdinand, excellent. Double limit broken. Guardian Hippo, excellent. Um, so let's look at these two new ones. One of them, double limit broken as well with the uh, taunt to begin. So, we've got basically speeds that alternate between fast and average so the first cast is at fast speed 400 percent damage to the target summons a fiend for the target which damages with 22 percent attack disappears when it has absorbed 12 percent so both of those are pretty minor actually everything's pretty minor so far Fa uh, fast speed 400 percent snipe is not that much but the Fiend generates a clone of itself to nearby enemies after every turn. So I think this is the kind of thing where it's going to grow exponentially. If there's one, then there's going to be two on the nearby. And then each of those nearbys are going to make more. And it quickly spirals to full Fiend saturation, I would say. Which then is now going to be 36% health to get rid of them all. Second charge, 450 um, 22% attack, 12 again. Uh, is there anything different? So the only difference is the second charge is 450%. This doesn't strike me as that great. Um, we'll see if it's different. Passive, 50% chance when the character casts their special skill to deal an additional 80% damage. And all allies get plus 21% critical chance for two turns. That's pretty good. And then the family, two heroes, 75% chance to give all allies plus 36% attack for three turns after this character receives special skill damage. Um, so attack and crit between this and the passive. And then if you defeat them with special skill damage, 100% chance. Um, what was the other thing? Related family bonus. Hero is related to the Atlantis family. Hero receives the family bonus of a related family when on a team with at least one related hero, which is an additional 5% defense. So they are not utilizing that unless this hero counts, but we'll see. Um, okay. Forces? I guess is how that's pronounced. 
crazy stats. I don't know why they seem to build for attack, because this hero does no damage, but... Okay, interesting. Perhaps this is just the way this hero was built to begin with. I don't recall what the base stats were. Um, passive is the same. Same family as well. Alright, first charge. Summons a merman minion. Say that ten times fast. For the caster, nearby allies with 27% HP and 26% attack. The minion adds 5% mana to its owner at the end of each turn. Caster gets taunt for three turns. Uh, next one is the same thing, but a stack is added. So 27%, 5% mana, caster nearby, taunt for three turns. All allies get plus 20% attack for their minions. That could be a fun minion team, especially in purple. You add Bira and Freya, and you're doing some serious minion damage. All right, so let's see what we're in for here. Obviously a very dangerous team overall, um, but we'll see how we can do. Well, we got purple. So, uh, I gotta turn the sound off after, sorry about that. Alright, so the blue arrows that you're seeing are an indication that they're on the first charge. Uh, just in case that wasn't clear. Whew, got a rough board here. So yeah, I just need to try to not talk while there's sounds being made because, again, I have to go turn my sound off after this. All right. Okay, so we will go for this side over here. Let's check out this special. We'll have to run this back one more time. So, let's see. Shared passive skill? That's weird. Oh, so those are... Why? Why are we seeing that? Oh, that's because of my team. Revival chance and mana gain is reduced. That's because of Reese here. Um, there's just a lot of text going on here. So there's two members for that family bonus, so they're not getting the other one, I don't think. So the red arrow that we're seeing now is an indication that the... Um, Second charge is going to be happening, which is where the stacks do occur. We've got Taunt here. You can see that the stats are ridiculous. 1,500 attack almost is unheard of um, with an attack boost. I'm just about at that, but I've got a 46% uh, attack boost to get there, and there is a limit break on that hero. Um... Wow, okay, so we'll run this back one more time because I want to see, I think the tank was not getting that 5% defense bonus because I think it has to be some of the older Atlantis heroes for that to work. Um, minion HP, 622, which is quite nice. What else do we want to demonstrate here? 5% mana every turn, let's, let's let them do something. Ooh. 
So, better tank material, in my opinion, with the Monogain taunt, especially double limit broken. The hero they were using as a tank doesn't make any sense to me. Alright. Just this one here. He's a tough guy. She dispels last. Alright, let's bring this back one more time. Uh, I'm going to stick with the same team just because that's what I would use here. So that's the most reliable for testing. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Wow, what a, what a board. Okay, so, yeah, no increased defense, so it does have to be the older Atlantis family to get that extra defense. Oh, he must have finally got a costume bonus. 5%, all right. All right, let's, how many more turns here? Two more turns of taunt. All right. So you can see the damage there, including the uh, extra damage. We're gonna kill this side again. Superior Revive. Hold that heal for one turn. Alright, well, let me know your thoughts on what you've seen here. So, the tank, <laughs> who they had as the tank, not... Not such a great hero, in my opinion. I guess we didn't get to see... Maybe I'll do this one more time, and uh, we can see... Um, exactly how the minions replicate. I think that would be important. The damage just seems, unfortunately, quite low. Um, but yeah, we should see how they replicate. To see how I anticipated. Um, ouch. Couple more hits on the target here. Crit. Seven seventy. Ooh, I gotta be careful here. All right, still taunt, but he's not charged. Yeah, I don't want to take any. Well, unless this kills. Damn. <laughs> He's tough. Alright, yeah, those minions are big. So let's do this one more time. And this time, we are just going to let the minions do their thing. So let's pick a color with less advantage. happens. I 
I think it was happening before, but I was not paying attention. Oh, it's probably healing, actually. Okay, so we've got one here. It doesn't say on the fiend itself what it does, but, um... Alright. Just gonna kill off these extra heroes on the side over here. Okay, so then it spread over to there. So my question is, this turn, when it spreads, how many are going to be added? Like, does it just move one to the right? Or is Panther going to get an additional... Because I think Panther's going to get an additional one, and so is Hathor, and then what's-his-name will get his first one, and it keeps moving like that. Which is far more dangerous, because then they're really stacking up. Yeah, so... Um, now, Obicon should get two this turn because each one of those is going to replicate, so he'll be fully saturated. Melina gets her first. He did not get two. So only one can be added each turn. Let's see if that wording is clear. The Fiend generates a clone of itself, but only a single clone. That does start to saturate. She should be able to pull all those away. And they keep coming back, so if you can't clear them all, they start coming back again right after. So yeah, pretty good. Um, let's see how much damage we can do with this guy. Wow. No defense down, so that makes a big difference. Protected? Why was he protected from the poison? Cannot receive buffs. Hmm, that didn't make any sense. Why did neither of them receive poison? Um... I guess if the target withstands? I don't know, I'm confused by that. That feels like a bug to me. Got a lot of revives here. All right, let's wrap this up. Um, I'll let you come to your own conclusions overall. I'm not that impressed. The, uh, the purple is the better of the two, for sure, in my opinion. And I think better on offense. This could be annoying, like... But that, this could be annoying, but that's not really a sign of a great team if um, it can punish a bad board. I mean... Brand new heroes, they should be able to do more than that, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, the minions are quite tough. Taunt is nice. Let me know your thoughts down below. Um, they probably get a buff, because that's what we've seen with every season, basically. They come out with uh, Season 5 and... Khufu receives a buff afterwards. He was quite mediocre to begin with, and then he became one of the strongest slow heroes in the game. So we'll probably be seeing buffs to these because they're pretty underwhelming at this point. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they take the red hero to a snipe over 500. Um, but yeah, pretty underwhelming for me for brand new heroes. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's worse when they keep pumping out overpowered heroes. But uh, yeah, that's what I think. So let me know your thoughts. Brand new heroes... What do we think? Thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.